Okay, so I'm about to install the uh, Dragon Plates uh, carbon fiber D-tube into the neck. Uh, here's the neck blank, which uh, was CNC'd a bit uh, earlier. Uh, what I did was I, I profiled the headstock, I put my locator holes for the uh, vacuum jig for the back of the neck, and uh, then I actually CNC'd the, uh, the cavity that the D-tube goes into. So you can see that it it's going to fit in there. I cut this with a half inch bullnose bit on the CNC machine. If you were doing this by hand, you would want to use a three quarter inch uh, round over bit and uh, cut it in one pass, or actually you could take multiple depth of passes. And then when you get to right here, where the saddle is going to go, and you can see the saddle fits underneath the, uh, the D-tube like that, you have to cut it, it's about two millimeters uh, thick. So what you need to do is just lower the bit down and cut a little bit deeper right there. Um, I did this with the same bit. I just programmed it to be a deeper slot right there. And then you can see that I have a half inch hole drilled down into the uh, heel. Uh, and that is for the, uh, for the heel reinforcement to go into. Be very careful when you're test fitting these. <laughs> get, when it gets down there, it's tough to get out because you're leveraging from one side. I end up having to use a um, uh, a dentist uh, pick, which I also I keep around to use for doing inlay work so I can press into the narrow uh, shell parts, uh, but it also works to uh, hook underneath this edge of the um, of the saddle so that I can lift from both sides and that helps to get it out of there. Um, alternatively, if you were going deep enough in the neck, you could drill all the way through and be able to push it up from underneath, but I'm not doing that here. Um, and then for this neck, because it is, uh, it's a bolt-on neck, you can see I've got a, uh, a filler plug in the hole there where the, uh, where the threaded insert will go. Uh, I can't drill all the way through it because uh, then it would take away the wood that the, uh, the, the, the uh, maple piece that I've gr drilled, uh, put in there to give the uh, threaded insert some good cross grain to grip onto so it's not going into uh, uh, end grain. Looks like a little funny face there, doesn't it? Um, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use uh, some 15 minute epoxy from Smith Industries uh, here in Atascadero, they're actually made locally. And uh, this seems to work out well. Um, and it'll give me time to mix it up. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna spread it into this trough here. I'm gonna inset the thing and then I'm probably gonna clamp it down just to make sure that it goes down nice and tight. Um, and I think that's, but all we need to worry about. Uh, I think I may put a piece of uh, piece of tape over the end here because I don't want the epoxy to uh, to fill up into a pocket and then go into the pipe rather than staying around it going down the hole there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mask that off so it can't do that. And uh, I may do the same on the ends here. I didn't do it last time. But actually, I think I will do that because uh, I end up wanting to fill in the voids with the epoxy just to make it a nice solid thing. There. Now, you want to be careful on your depth uh, of your trough here. So, so my necks are only uh, 60 thousandths of an inch thick down here and uh, 70 down here. And this wants to be down at about 50 thousandths. Um, in fact, it gets a little little... Uh, light down there. In fact, once that neck's been carved, you, you can actually almost see light through it. Uh, so you want to be very careful not to go too deep on that. Uh, and that's about it. Once you get it in place, uh, it makes the, the neck very stiff and uh, keeps that heel from breaking. I used this last year on a guitar for the first time and I just had it back to do an adjustment on it and there's no sign of any uh, cracks or anything on the heel there so it definitely does its job and this of course is an articulated neck so it doesn't bear against the guitar it actually sits on three set screws so it's taking a lot of stress on that heel there and um, this works just fine for doing that I actually had a change of heart and uh, decided instead of trying to tape the ends off to use uh, some earplugs uh, I use these these are the expanding foam ones 
and I use these to uh, to plug up my uh, tuner holes when I'm finishing to keep the uh, the epoxy filler from uh, seeping down into the holes there. And so what I did so was I shoved one on each end of the uh, of the D tube, and that'll do a good enough job of keeping any epoxy from seeping in there. Okay, so here it is uh, glued in place. Uh, I, I mixed up way too much epoxy as usual. I think I, I mixed up about twice of that. So obviously I could have gone with half. I think it, it ended up being like a quarter ounce. It's just way too much. It always looks like less and then you put the hardener in there and it doubles. And so you only need about a quarter of an ounce. Um, so I, I spread it in there with the, uh, with the mixer, the, the same uh, uh, popsicle stick that I used to mix it with. I uh, spread it in this groove first, then I actually applied it to the, uh, the heel reinforcement on the sides of that and then put it down in there. Uh, I did tape off the end of that. And then the key is don't forget to spread glue in this area on the, uh, on the, uh, the heel reinforcement where, where it saddles the underside of this so that they adhere together. So it's in here and then I just dribbled the rest of the epoxy into the end here until it leveled out to give it a nice solid fill for the void that I couldn't get to on the end. Uh, and it's pretty good. I'm just going to put some light clamps on it to keep pressure on it uh, to let it dry throughout the night. And then uh, tomorrow I'll be ready to CNC the back side of this neck here. And here it is all clamped in place. Uh, just use these very light clamps. I don't want to put too much pressure and squeeze the uh, epoxy out. And uh, I put some wax paper underneath the clamps just in case epoxy gets on them. I don't want to have them glued to the carbon fiber. All right, here it is after the uh, epoxy has mostly set. Uh, still a little bit tacky. Uh, but for the most part, it's good. And they're just the right depth, just a couple thousandths below the surface of the neck, so I don't have to deal with sanding off the uh, carbon fiber surface. Here's one of my plugs there. I could actually take that out now. Uh, so it's looking good. And that is the carbon fiber D-tube. I will uh, add some video of the neck after it's been machined.